there's the amount of hormones we make, and then there's the balance of those hormones. And both of those matter when it comes time for us to feel our best and also have energy and release weight and sleep well and all the things. Tune into this episode to learn 10 symptoms you should pay attention to that aren't normal and three steps to get you feeling better in both of these areas. Let's dive in. What's up, sister? Welcome back to the Period Whisperer podcast, the show helping perimenopause and menopause women de-stress your body and decode what it's saying to you so you can own your own health, energy, and weight loss again. If you're new, I'm so happy you're here. I'm Bria. I'm your host, a recovering people pleaser and hustle addict turned functional and holistic hormone specialist. Let's lean in and learn what your body is saying to you. Well, hey there, sister. Welcome back to the Period Whisperer podcast. I'm so excited that you are here and wanting to talk about this stuff with me. I think one of the biggest and best things we can do is talk more and more about our hormones, talk about how we're actually feeling in our body, connecting those dots, and just normalizing this phase of life. I mean, let's be honest. We maybe heard about menopause growing up. Maybe there were some whispers from our moms or our grandmas or some TV sitcom. That's where I remember hearing about it first. But nobody really talked to us much about perimenopause. And the two are really closely linked. And the more we know and talk about perimenopause, the better our menopause and beyond gets for us. And of course, the more we talk about it and feel better, the more the next generation starts to feel better. It's just one of these empowering things where when the conversation is started, education happens, we can make a difference, we can pay attention. And it's just becomes a very empowering thing because perimenopause happens for us, not to us, for us to pay attention, for us to make the changes so that we can thrive in the next 30, 40, 50, 50 years. We've got years. We have decades left, sister. And I know if you're anything like me, you are ready for those to be the best decades of your life. So I wanted to talk today about the two aspects of our body, right, that really matter. It's not just about whether we have enough hormones. We hear a lot about that, right? Should I take hormones? Uh, You know, I don't have enough of this hormone. I don't have enough of that. When we go to the healthcare practitioner, that's often what we get told is, oh, yep, your hormones are in range or, oh, you know, they're not in range. Now you're over here. But also what really matters is the balance of these hormones, right? You might have estrogen that's in range according to your blood work, but if your progesterone is out of whack, it's throwing off the balance and vice versa. And it might be in the range, but not where it used to be. So now we have an imbalance. Those two in particular are symbiotic. And having, of course, too much of one can really add a workload to the detoxification pathways of our body, right? Our liver's role is really to metabolize these hormones every single month as they come at us so that we can turn them from being fat soluble to water soluble and poop them out. And if we can't, then they're floating around in the body wreaking havoc, right? We want our our hormones to come, do their job, and then be metabolized out. But again, in an imbalance, it starts to cause as a backup, right? So because our, our body, and that's when we start to really see more symptoms show up, right? We're, our body is, is a body of symptoms, our systems, not symptoms. Our body is a body of systems. It's very systematic. So if one system backs up, then it causes trouble all the way through the chain of command. And, and of course, on top of that, so on top of, am I making enough hormones? You know, are they in balance? Am I able to metabolize the hormones? you know, we kind of want to know why the hormones are out of whack in the first place. Because if we never figure that piece out, or if we never work on figuring that piece out, then we're always going to end up with this trouble in the chain of command, right? There's always going to be some some imbalance and then some backup, and then we're not making, you know, and making enough. We know in perimenopause, as as we achieve menopause, the amount of our hormones are decreasing. If we can heal any underlying issues and really focus on coaching up function in all the areas of our body so that the balance stays there, then the symptoms that arise from imbalance and not having enough of these hormones can really start to dissipate and go away in our lives, making it a lot easier for our body 
to have energy, to sleep well, to feel well, and of course, to burn fat. Because it's the imbalance of things in our body that pushes the body into a stressed place. And a stressed body prioritizes survival. And survival prioritization is not fat burning. It's not even muscle building. When we're trying to prioritize survival, we're just keeping the body alive, which often means storing fat. So if we, you know, we listen to the world tell us a lot about like, oh, well, I'm getting older and I'm in menopause and, I, you know, this is just part of it. I'm going to gain weight. And I just think that is total bunk. I think that, yes, there are some changes and challenges as, as systems break down and, and slow down. Maybe we don't operate as fast as we used to. I think it's just more that youth was very forgiving. And when we stay on top of our systems and the balance in our body, then we can still achieve well-being and fat loss and muscle building. And you know it's true. That's why we can see these amazing like 90-year-old women like bench pressing and, and building muscle. And, and we can see people living into their their old age because of of maintaining balance and homeostasis in the body. So I wanted to talk today first about symptoms that aren't normal because our world, our society, and I fall right into into this with you. We really have started to be a little over functioning and not actually paying attention to what our body is saying. Right? We have symptoms that come up, even think like even as simple as oh, I'm just really really tired. So instead of course correcting that and thinking, okay, well if I'm tired, I probably need a little bit more sleep tonight. We're like. I'm tired, I'm going to take some caffeine or energy pills or monster drinks or, and look, in my 20s, I was also out in the bar drinking double vodka Red Bulls, so I I know that I was a part of the problem, (laughs) but we want to pay attention to what the body is really needing. And even if we have days where we're like, well, you know what, I just can't slow down today, I'm just going to try to make this a little less painful, have a few deep breaths and take a little extra caffeine today, you know, but tonight I'm going to get more sleep or this weekend I'm going to get a little bit more sleep to compensate. Okay. But we want those to be the exception and not the rule. You know, when our body is tired, we do want to give it sleep. When we're feeling frazzled, we do want to learn how to breathe and calm the anxiety within us. When we're hungry, we want to eat real food to support the body in all of its symptoms, systems and what it's doing. I'm having a hard time with this word today. So let's talk about some of these symptoms because I think we have gotten so far outside of our body that we don't always even recognize what is normal and what is not normal. And often we don't want to talk about it because it makes us uncomfortable. We don't want to deal with another problem. I mean, honestly, sometimes another problem coming around in life is like, oh, I don't even have time for this. Like right now I have two cracks in my windshield and my garbage disposal isn't working and the I, the thought of even taking time to deal with those things is so irritating. So we can get away with that in some areas for a little while, but when it comes to our body, we don't want the cracks in the foundation to be there that long. We do not want our garbage disposal of our body to be backing up. We need to deal with these things and we want to deal with them before they become a much bigger problem. So we want to get really great at listening to what our body says to us, what she's telling us before these whispers, before these gentle nudges and messages turn into screams. And all of a sudden, you know, my back, my garbage disposal isn't working. Maybe it turns into like a complete backup and flooding and there's a much bigger mess. If you know a plumber and they want to walk me through how to install a garbage disposal, please send me a message on Instagram. (laughs) Okay, so let's talk about some key symptoms. And I wanted to narrow it down to 10 that really are symptoms that are, are not normal, which are messages from your body. And, and of course, I like to think of things as the 80-20 rule, right? There's always things that kind of come in life and we, you know, if, if, If symptoms are only bugging you 20%, okay, maybe it can be like my garbage disposal or my cracked windshield on the Jeep and it can be let slide a little bit longer. But when those symptoms start to be more than 20% of our life, and let's be really real about what that, that that's not a huge amount, right? I always say to my clients, like when we're, when we're trying to eat in an 80-20 manner, we're like, okay, 20% food can be maybe inflammatory things. You know, when we look at the amount of meals, if we eat, you know, three meals a day, 
tweaked, that's, that's seven days a week, that's 21 meals in a week, 20% is four times. So at four different meals, we can have four things max throughout the week. So let's get really real on what that rule is. But if you're experiencing any of these symptoms more than 20% of the time in your life, it's time to pay attention and do something about it. But let's talk about a few of them. One is hair loss. Hair loss on our head. You know, obviously we know we naturally lose some hair. If you have longer hair, you're going to notice this a lot more. If you ever had a baby, you probably recognize like it felt like so much hair was coming out of your head after the baby was born. But if you are at a point, you know, in perimenopause where you are noticing significant hair loss and it's every time you wash your hair, like you're washing your hair three times, three, four times a week and you're brushing it and a lot of hair is coming out, that is an indicator of something that is up and off in the body. Hair gain is the same. And I mean, by hair gain, I mean hair gain on our face, right? Often if we're seeing excessive hair gain on our face, like getting a little bit furrier than usual, maybe your esthetician, as mine did once, is telling you it's looking a little thick. <laughs> you know, maybe we want to pay a little attention to that. Often that's an indicator of too much testosterone in our body, which believe it or not, in women, testosterone, we, even though we don't have near as much as the average man, we, we do, it's a very prominent hormone in, in our sex hormones. And when we have too much, it does throw things off and impacts us. Um, if you're having heavy, clotty, painful periods or intense PMS, these are all messages of your body of a hormone imbalance, specifically too much estrogen or the imbalance of estrogen progesterone being off. And we want to make sure that we're addressing that because if we have too much estrogen and that usually means that our detoxification system isn't working right, it's overloading that symptom. So it can start to cause more issues in our, in our, in our liver, start to cause more issues in our gut. And PMS in general is such an important one because I think when I think PMS, I think cravings and cranky and fatigue and maybe a bit weepy. I mean, those are all signs that something is a little off. And if it's happening every single month for multiple days of the month, then that tells us something is off too much, right? It's not just a tough day or an off day or an overwhelmed day. It really should, we really should start to pay attention. And really we should be teaching our daughters this. They should know this from the get-go that symptoms of PMS really should be paid attention to, that there's more to it than just us, you know, feeling a little bit more tired, a little bit more run down. Of course, night sweats and hot flashes can absolutely be signs of low estrogen, you know, and especially if they come along with memory issues. Um, I think that's a really big one, memory issues and fatigue or brain fog things. <laughs> Here I am. I do struggle with low estrogen and this is why I'm talking about this and I can't seem to get my words out right now. But memory, uh, but, uh, memory issues and brain fog are a sign of of estrogen being too low, especially in line with progesterone. So it's not just about the amount of that estrogen, it's, it's, it's the ratio of it alongside our progesterone in there. Incontinence, and this is an important one because I think for those of us, I used to really normalize, you know, after giving birth to babies, I had both my babies uh, vaginally. So, you know, peeing when I did some jumping jacks seemed like a pretty normal thing that I was told, and it is not a normal piece. And and it can be exacerbated, of course, with pelvic floor issues and weakness as we get older, but it also is an indicator of a hormone imbalance as, as our hormones decline. So we want to pay attention to these things and it can be urine, it can be pooping a little bit, like let's try not, we don't have to tell all of our friends about it, but let's pay attention to these things and maybe have a conversation with our healthcare practitioner. Mild depression is, is one to pay attention to for sure if we have you know, really high progesterone compared to our estrogen, we can start to sink a little into some darker thoughts than normal. And that's a tough feeling, especially, you know, if you've never been that way before, but either way, mild depression is mild depression and, and our hormones can play a role in that. On the opposite of that, I'd say along with that or hand in hand is elevated anxiety. So if you have, you know, even if you've maybe always been a bit more of an, a high energy, high anxious person, if you're noticing it happening cyclically or all month long, we want to pay attention. There are an, there is an impact of our hormones there. Skin struggles for sure. If you're noticing that it feels like your skin is aging really fast or looking crepey or really dry, even though you feel like you're hydrating properly or you're 
having more acne, then we want to look into which hormones are causing that and is it my detoxification system? Again, what's going on in the gut and the liver that might be, you know, maybe they're overwhelmed. Can we do some nourishing in those places? And of course, quick, quick, a quickening to react. Like maybe you're quicker to react than in the past. Like you're more irritable, maybe a bit more harsh than usual, where you just felt like you used to be sort of a, a kind and patient and happy person. And now you just don't have the bandwidth for it. And although I think as we age, we should get better at setting boundaries. I think reaction time is really important to pay attention to because if we aren't, aren't able to manage our emotions or our reactions, then that can often really be tied to what's going on in our body, in that chain of command. And of course, there's many, many other symptoms. That's not to say that these are the be all and the end all, but these are ones that often get overlooked. Uh, restlessness, I would say, is another one, or you know, where maybe maybe there's a twitching or muscle twitching, things like that, where we can't quite sit still. These are things that I want to bring some like highlight for you and shed a little light on for you to pay attention to and start to notice: Is this happening every month at the same time of the month? Is this happening more than twenty percent, like more than four times a week, for example? Um, and I would say it'd have to be less than that to meet the eighty twenty, right? Is it happening more than four? times a month is probably a really good way because, um, you know, when I said four times a week, that's for when we're eating three meals a day. When we're talking about symptoms, I think the question is, is this happening more than four times a month? Is it happening more than I'd like it to happen? Because it's all a bit personal, isn't it? Right? How is it making you feel? in your life because sometimes if we're if we're reacting really quickly then we that comes with its own shame spiral doesn't it where we just don't feel really great about what we did and then we can slide into more of a mild depression so when i talk about these symptoms happening in the 80 20 it's like it's not just one of these symptoms happening maybe four times a month are you having multiple symptoms happening four times a month that are bugging you i think that's a really good number to say okay it's time to pay attention if you're if you've been maybe um a real high achiever and you're really good at, at ignoring how you feel to accomplish a job right to accomplish a task at hand where some of us are um then it's time to kind of tune in and pay attention and do a little tracking so now that we know these symptoms right now that we've started to recognize some symptoms we should pay attention to what do we do i wanted to share with you three steps to getting you to feel better one i do think it is always important to have a routine checkup so if you haven't been to your healthcare practitioner in a year it's always good to go whether it's a naturopath or a doctor or a nurse practitioner whatever it is that you like to do go just i think whenever there are major changes it's always important to have a quick checkup just to rule out any things um that you know that that is a really big deal that we can't focus on holistically, right? We want to start there. Number two is to start with the foundations. You hear me talk about this all the time and I repeat myself because these are the answers, sister. We cannot avoid solidifying the foundations of health in our body, just like building a high rise. If you want your house to stand tall and long and you know, be able to withhold all of the weather and all of the stuff out in the world. We need to have a solid foundation. So you want to lock in your four health pillars. You want to make sure you have a routine bedtime and a routine wake time and that you're getting eight hours of sleep in there. You want to make sure you are eating three meals a day that have nice balanced macro and micronutrients. You want to make sure that you are moving your body seven to 10,000 steps every single day and stretching your body every single week a few times you want to make sure you are consciously taking time to manage your stress and your relationship with your stress in your life and looking for pleasure and joy it's a really important piece and if you can't it's time for you to get some help and there's no shame in that if you had a child and maybe you were a child I remember being in high school I'd always done really well in school but I had high school and calculus was just beyond me. It was so confusing. So I got a tutor and the tutor really, really helped. And that's how I want you to think about this. If you're having trouble locking in your four health foundations, that's when you know it's time to get a tutor because they might just spot, they might just explain something a little differently for you. They might just spot something in there to make life easier for you, right? If you're eating the wrong things, then it's going to be hard for you to make it through without having cravings. So we want to just bring it and get a little bit of help in that time. And of course, 
if you do your foundations, if you lock those suckers in for three months and not much changes, then you know it's definitely time to get some help. But I want you to think about it this way. I want you to feel good about the foundations that you have built because it means that you are primed for the best results. No matter what route you go to achieve optimal health, these foundations are the same across those routes. Sleep, move, eat well, stress management, and pleasure. So if you do that underlying work first and you're still struggling, whether you need hormone replacement therapy or whether you you know, ha- need some help specifically with liver congestion or, or mold or parasites or other areas there you know, or gut health issues, then your body will respond so much faster when these foundations have been locked in for a while. So take that time and do that work. And if you need help doing the work, that's when you know it's time to hire a tutor. So that's what I want to leave you with today is to really pay attention to your symptoms, recognize them, track them a little bit. And if you need help being consistent or you've been consistent and you still need help, that's when you know it's time, the right time for you to invest. So swipe up. You can apply for one of my one month, my three month exclusive coaching program. We can have a free call and see if it's the right thing for you. Or if you're a more self paced kind of person and you like to do things on your own, that's cool too. Swipe up into the show notes. Join us in the perimenopause posse. This is where you get a great protocol that's going to allow you to do this on your own, but still get a great community to support you, still get some once a month live action where we talk and get your questions answered. But don't stay stuck. Take action and take action for you. Pay attention to what you're going through so that you can take this perimenopause time and allow it to be for you and not just to you. All right, sister, go out, be more in your life and not just less on a scale. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me on the Period Whisperer podcast. If you liked this episode, take 30 seconds right now to write a review on iTunes and then reach out to me directly on Instagram at Bria underscore period underscore whisperer and message me there with a screenshot of your review. As a thank you, I will give you a customized free hormone audit to get you on your way to the best health of your life in midlife.